true, but we have at least to see. This is, this is, this is, this is so when you ask me what you can do, just you can write something. You can write something. This is all test based. Okay. Right. So means just we can we can print something here and we can uh, look that one, but we cannot do that one. But when you come to the programming part, what mm -hmm. you need to do is just you need to write the code. You need to check whether that is the syntactically correct or not. Means that the grammatically it is correct or not. And we need to compile that one. We need to run that one. We need to debug that one. Right. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. those things are not available from editors like Edit Plus. Mm -hmm. So Edit Plus is not the integrated development environment. So we have different tools which will be considered, which will be called as IDEs. So one of them is Eclipse. Eclipse, okay. okay. So this is my Eclipse. Okay. How? Oh, oh, uh, I mean, actually, under uh, Eclipse, also download just call edit edit plus and it's not bad land. The ah Eclipse ante mall mali mani ko software download just kula. Yeah, yeah. We need to develop. We need to download software. Okay. I will. I will send. Don't worry. I will send once this mall session completes, we will configure everything in our mission and we will work there. Okay. Okay. So far, we required. Uh, uh, if we discuss uh, the basics of the required the JDK, mm -hmm. so that also we need to download. Okay, and we have different versions of the JDK, so we will get either 1.6, 1.7. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, it provides the uh, environment, and for that we need to do some setup in the in your system. We need to create, we need to put in the environment. Uh, you, you are familiar with. Uh, uh, means that is the uh, means that is the uh, adding some environment variable to your system. Are you aware of that one? I mean, environment variable is downloading some app to the system. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Down, after downloading, we need to create something here. So if you come here, uh, if you right click on the my my computer, you will get the properties. After that, you will get the advanced system. Okay. Right here you have the environment variables. So here we need to specify the path, class path, and the Java code. Means that the wherever Java, wherever Java code uh, JDK is available. Okay. So once this is done, we will set up everything in our mission. Don't worry. Okay. Once once this is done, what we need to do is we need to download. Or the IDE like Eclipse. Okay. Intended Eclipse. Yeah, Eclipse. Okay. Okay. This Eclipse actually uh, helps us to develop your code using Java. And you can see the errors. You can compile that. You can debug that. You can test it. You can see uh, during the program execution what it is doing and where it is using the how we are doing. All these things we can check there. And the only Eclipse on there, man, error store, man, Ah, not only like that. We have different IDEs like NetBeans. We have Eclipse. We have and some SPS uh, 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 Spring tool, Suit, uh, any incompatible tool. Okay. So, but most of the people, 70 to 80 percent people, so they use the Eclipse. Okay. But all are similar. Okay. Okay, so Eclipse and Eclipse are going to be downloaded as well. Once you download and there is something called the Eclipse EXE, mm -hmm. you click that one, it comes, are you able to see my system, right? Yes. Yeah. So it comes like this. Okay. So this is actually the environment where you can develop your Java code, you can check each and everything, whether it is working correctly or whether it is compiled or not compiled, what is happening during the program execution, as that you can see. If you have a Eclipse open, you can see code lines in the code lines. No, 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 it's not a good thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing. 
So, this is the same thing. Okay. So, this is the same thing. Different, different tasks. If you have any other investment, you can use environment variable and use it. So, you can use the same thing. You can use the same thing. Yes, you can use the same thing. Yes, you can use the same thing. इकल पे ये दी एक्लिप्स को स्टार्ट है तब रो इट रीड्स द एक्सप्लोरेट वेरिएबल एंड इट आईडेंटिफाइज मेरे मेरे के सॉफ्टवेयर इज अवेलेबल मेरी वॉइस में जो मुझे ना कंट्रोल नहीं है नो नो व्हाट आई एम व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज तो व्हेन एक्लिप्स इज बी ओपन ओके एनवायरनमेंट वेरिएबल लो मानो डिक्लेयर ये जावा को मने ट्वेंटी दाने रीड जैसे थे। ओके। आप आते हैं रीड जैसे। आप आते हैं रीड जैसी। ओके। ये कड़ा जेडी के वर्षन उन्हें इन जब पेशन आईडेंटिफाई जैसे करते थे। ओके। तो आते हैं बेसिक जब पर चीज़ में ने मानो एक्लिप्स ने ये चीज़ तो ना मानते मानो को जेडी के वर्षन ट्वेंटी क Yes, but then we will start the Eclipse start and we will see what we will do directly. Okay. If we will start the Eclipse session start, we will see what we will do directly. Okay. Why is it not defined properly? Okay. Why is it not defined properly? We will do the programs in the Eclipse and we will do the same thing in the Java basic. We will do the same thing in the Eclipse session. We will do the same thing. तो वोली तुम इतना पाउंड है ना तो एनवायरनमेंट वेरिएबल में जावा होम चेंज करें सी इतने सुस्त आदेश कौन? ओके, ओके, तो परगेट अपॉर्ट दिस थिंग सी करिए वो फिर समथिंग वैन होना गया था वन मार्च को नहीं रहो फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल इट पुट प्रेजेंट किया, तो ये एरिया एमेज़न्ड ये एरिया एक्चुअल जो मनोमो ये तो चैलेंज जो भी स्थान है, डोंट वरी। ओके। अरे बेसिक नो डोंट स्थान है, डोंट वरी। तो ये ये यहाँ लो अंतर में तो मानक समझ कर ये मानक पर्टिकुलर का ओके ये यहाँ आता था ना, ये नेमन टम आता है एक्चुअल का पैकेज एक्सप्लोरर आता है। ओके। तो बट वेरेस ये ये यहाँ नहीं, एडिटर आ हाँ इकलौता मानो एक्चुअल का फोर्टी टाइप डिस्को होता समथिंग ये रहना चाहिए इसको मानो इकलौता डिस्को होता है ना तो दिन की दिन की लिंक आप बोलते हो इकलौता मेरी इकलौता जो सपोज़ जो नियर आप जावा ना तो उसका ना दिन का डबल ओपन डिस्प्ले ये तो का डिस्प्ले है ये मत मत बोल ये नहीं रहता तो करके डबल ओपन � अंते मानो डायरेक्ट तो जावा ला प्रोग्राम रास्को कुंडे पर एक्लिप्स ला रास्को होते हैं। हाँ जावा जावा में प्रोग्राम रास्को जी जावा लैंग्वेज में बट आज रायरान की एक तरह से मानो को ये रिटर्न जावा लगता है। हाँ ओके। अंबाइन जरान की रान जरान की जावा लगता है। हाँ ओके। दान इपड़े में अंडे ये बनने दी कि उनका मतलब को ये क्रस्ट पर है तो ये प्रमाणित सी सी ड्राइव लो ये बनने ये क्रस्ट पर है तो वो एक वाले चप्पल ले लो उनका हम्म ये वो पियन नानो इधर नानो इधर नानो ना इनमें ना राइट क्लिक की राइट क्लिक की हम्म हेलो दिस इज रिजवान हियर हाय रिजवान हाय कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I, I don't think that uh, somebody joined. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay. Okay, okay. No problem, no problem. So, so what I'm saying, uh, yeah, who, uh, what is his name, uh, your name, please? My name is Rizwan, Rizwan Ali Khan. Okay, okay, okay. Hi, Rizwan. Hi. Yeah, just, uh, just, uh, I'm, uh, I'm discussing about the editor version. And what JDK versions we have? The JDK okay. version 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8 like that. So the latest version is the 1.8. Mm -hmm. 
but still uh, uh, companies, most of the companies using 1.6, 1.7. So we, we cover all the issues, but we use the GDK of 1.6 or 1.7 for developing our applications so for entire this training. And we also cover what are the different features added uh, uh, when the version is increased. Right? Okay. Okay. So that is one. And the another one is actually we need to, uh, for developing any Java program, we need to JDK version, the JDK software, Java software, right? Yes. So, so that, that, that software actually we need to download from maybe, uh, from, uh, you can type that on the Google and we can get that one. Okay. Once you, once you get that, uh, once you download the JDK version, so what you need to do is you need to set up the uh, path, Java home in environment as environment variable. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we need to, we can put, we can define that, where we can define that one, we can put that one here by using the computer, right click, properties, and go to advanced system settings, environment variable, so here my JDK version, right? So my JDK version is here, JDK 16024. Here Oracle middleware JDK 16024. Means I am using here 1.6 version. Apart from that, we need to define the path. In path, actually, we need to define the bin folder. Okay. Let me show that one also where we have C Oracle. Middleware. This is our version. So here it contains the all libraries and the binary files and the required supporting JRE. So this software actually we need to download from net. It, it may come JDK 1.6 or JDK 1.7 or JDK 1.8 or 1.4, 1.5 or something like that. We are using JDK 1.6. Okay. So this is the first requirement. And here within this bin folder, we have all executable commands. EXE means actual executable command. Okay. So actually Java actually comes with two translators. I will come to that one later. The compiler and interpreter. Okay, I will count that one. But here, the important thing that we need to consider is the Java C. Java C, C stands for compiler. So actually, whether you run application, maybe from the command prompt, or maybe from Eclipse, what it will do is, internally, this Eclipse actually refers to the Java home, which is configured in as environment variable, and when you run this application, it contacts this Java C program. Okay, and if this Java C contains the rules and regulations, uh, uh, how to compile the program and how to generate the data file. So okay. once once your application, once your program, forget about what is the program, uh, just given a single line, uh, single line of code also, whatever you have written. So when you try to run, so I will show you here how to run the program, how to debug, and how to watch those things. But just I'm giving some basic panda. So once you, uh, one, once you uh, try to run here, first it will contact the Java C, and it executes the Java C actually the compiler. It uh, checks syntactically whether whatever the program you have written is correct or not. And even it, but it, every time here in, in, in Eclipse, every time when you type something, it automatically it contacts the Java C and it checks whether it is directly correct or not. See, suppose if I write something here, it shows error here. See. Because it is contacting, every time it is contacting this Java C guy, this guy. So it is checking whether it is correct or not because it, it doesn't know what is this meaning. That's why it's giving error. So here in editor, we need to 
type meaningful means that the whatever the Java knows, so the, the type of syntactically we need to provide here. Otherwise, it won't identify. This is similar to one language like English language. If you type something here, it, it, it English guy knows. If you are talking Telugu, so because uh, uh, see this one actually uh, referring to uh, means that is identify when we talk in Telugu, right? So that is the problem. So grammatically, it should be correct. So means the whatever we are discussing. The other person should know that one. So here we are typing something here means actually Java should identify what we are typing. It should know. So there are some predefined uh, APIs or classes uh, or grammatical uh, representations we have. So we need to follow those. Okay. So for, for this, this is actually the area where we can develop our application. So what I'm doing, what I'm trying to tell here is, so this is once you click that uh, uh, one minute, I will show the clips also. So this is, uh, are you, uh, 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 do you have any doubts regarding this uh, bin folder and all these things? Uh, no, as of now. Okay. So just I want to add one thing, this is Java C compiler and there is another one called actually Java. This is uh, uh, this, this helps for runtime environment means that is the ones uh, we have the compiler and the interpreter, right? So here, yeah. Java C by using it converts into the intermediate code that is actually called R class file, and this it takes the R class file and it, it, it interacts with the uh, operating system and prepares the final executable code for running the application. So these two are important. Important. This is the compiler. Java has two things. We'll discuss uh, more why Java has two things. Other programming language, other programming languages like C, C++ contains only one, but the Java contains two. Why it is? I mean, two two means what? Uh, what are they called? Yeah, I can see for any programming language, whatever you have written, it should be converted into <coughs> system known language. Oh, okay. System known language is operating system known language. Okay. Right? So while converting that one, what it will do is actually it creates the system properties also. I think if you are familiar with the, with the operating system, mm -hmm. the operating system basic. So operating system knows only zeros and ones, right? Yes. So internally, uh, and we have uh, different uh, operating system features like how to represent the number, how to represent the negative number, how to represent the string, like that. We have different uh, operating system features we have. I think if you are a uh, computer background or electronics background, uh, for uh, negative number representations, we have ones complement, twos complement, and tens complements also. Anybody knows that one? Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So the thing is, so that time actually it interacts with the operating system, right? But suppose if you move and it prepares the final version, that is actually called exe file. Generally, the exe file contains two parts. One is your core plus operating system features. Okay. It combines it combines these two and prepares the single unit of work. So that single unit of work will be the executable code. But now, actually, we are saying that I will come actually later all these things, but just uh, uh, I'm briefing these things. So Java is actually 100% uh, portable language. We can uh, we can say. What do you mean by portable language? Meaning, if you are aware of C or C++ or some other programming language, even in C also, we get suppose your Java your program name is A C that will be converted into the intermediate level that a dot obj and after that it will be converted into a dot exe so so as i told earlier yeah, any exe file it contains your program so whatever you have written here say for example this is your program your program plus Operating system features. It combines these two and prepares the final version, that is the exe file. 
So by taking the PXC file, if you move from the Windows environment to Linux environment, the Linux environment to operating system features may not compatible with the Windows environment features. But Windows environment features because we have prepared the EXE file using on Windows environment and taking the TXE file, we are trying to execute in Linux. Yeah, for example, I am giving two different scenarios. We develop an application using Windows and the same application we are going to uh, without coding, without uh, I mean that is the uh, .c file or .dot file. Directly we are moving that .dot file from Windows to Linux. So as the .dot file contains the operating system features also, these features may not compatible with the Linux operating system. So exactly whatever the code, whatever the .dot file you have prepared using the one environment and you are trying to execute that in different environment without any issue, then that language is considered as the portable language. But C, C++ and some other languages are not portable languages because operating system features also you are getting into your EXE file. Those features may not be compatible with other operating system. Right? Yeah, that's so, true. Where, if you want to execute the Windows file in Linux, then we have to do DOS to Unix command. Dos to Unix, Dos to Unix command where that is actually that is that is different. That is different. Actually, you may get the uh, you are talking here. Yeah. Uh, are you talking edit plus or something like that? Where we need to go to the Dos to Unix. Uh, we use it like if you wanted to like execute the Windows shell script in the Linux system, uh -huh. then you have to like run Dos to Unix command to convert uh -huh. the Windows file into Unix file. Unix format actually. No, 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 no. That, that, that is different. I am showing here. Your doubt I am showing here in Eclipse. See, the thing is, if you see here, I put point right here, PC. It is showing the PC. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, this means actually whatever you, have, you type here, something, and if you move this one to Unix mission, so it will be considered as the PC, PC features only. But if you change this one here actually somewhere here we have document file format change file format to unix if you put then now it changes to unix and run meaning so when you move this file from here to there we will get for each and every line something like this one one minute i will type it comes like this meaning this is actually called control and character this control and character is uh, available in only the Windows environment. Uh, the, original, the original old file will be like that or it will be converted into Unix? Yeah, it will be it will be removed this control and characters if you use the DOS to Unix command. Okay. That, that is different. But what this is you are talking about the only the uh, text that we have written. I am talking about internally what happens. Okay. So the thing is, whenever you prepare the exe file, apart from your program that you have written by using any editor, it also includes the operating system features in, in, inside. So if you try to execute the same thing in the different environment, they see your index machine, uh, your Windows environment, suppose say for example, for the negative number representation, your Windows environment is the most complement. Right? But whereas the Unix mission that we are going to run, it may use the two's, two's complement or maybe text complement or maybe different uh, number representation for, repre for representing the number, a negative number. These two will not match, right? So what is the best solution for this one is we need to prepare some intermediate uh, intermediary uh, code that is actually called dark class. So what it will do is your Java code, suppose A Java if you have, this will be converted into A dot dot class file. This dot class file contains only the intermediary values. Means it won't include any system properties, any operating system properties. This is actually called byte code. This will be generated by compiler. You got it? 
clear. After that, this a dot class will be converted into mission known language. Just I am giving uh, something. And uh, once this is converted, so then that will be ready for your execution. So here actually interpreter. Interpreter come. So some languages contain only either interpreter or compiler. But Java has both things. Why? Because to achieve portable. Portable means language independent. See here. Some other operating systems like uh, C, it first converts into A dot OBJ object oriented and after that this will be converted into A dot EXT. This actually contains your uh, code plus system feature. Best example is the number representation. OS feature. But whereas here it contains only a dot class contains only the byte code. So by taking so here a dot abj a dot exe file, if you run into different environment, it may run it may not run because the operating system exactly matches whatever you have whatever the operating system features are integrated into this exe file, there only you can run. Otherwise you cannot. But whereas in our Java environment, you are not directly going into exe file you are generating some intermediary code that is actually called a dot class. Even if we see any language, we may have only the class files. Being that whatever the API, PDBCR, even some different versions are, the dot files if you open, it contain only dot class files. Why? Because it contains only the byte code, uh, intermediary code, which will be directly moved from one mission to another mission so that there, when you run this ADAT-EXE file on which machine you are running, that mission features, that mission, that mission's operating system features will be combined and then it will be ready for execution. That's why Java is actually called 100% portable language. Guys, you got my point? Yes. Okay, Shankar, any doubt? No, no. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, of course, that is the world version, C language and all these things, of course, uh, nowadays we are not using for program purpose, but they are using for different purposes like games and all these things. And one more thing, for even Unix and uh, Windows and even Oracle also, all these things are built on C language only. Now, of course, that is, that is a different uh, story. So even Java, Java also uh, written C language. But uh, they have written in such a way that so it should be portable across the environment. Okay, so we will discuss uh, uh, other things also clearly. So that is the thing. So the thing is when you open the Eclipse, when you open the Eclipse, actually it will uh, sort the environment variable where our the JDK uh, Java uh, Java home is defined. So then when you open this one, so it refers that one and it edits all these things. Okay. Now this area is actually called the package explorer. So whatever you define here is actually called a project name. And under that you may have a different structure. Like a SRC folder means all your dot Java files will be PHP here. You will see just I'm sorry, we will, uh, I will uh, uh, means that you can take the separate uh, Files for ten minutes and how to create the package and how to create all these things. But just on through the existing one. Okay. And here, see this is the system libraries. The program files are there, there is something like that it is happening, right? It refers to those features here. You can configure this one or if you want to configure this one, whatever we have mentioned in your environment variable, it takes from those also. Right? So for all these things. Somewhere in your mission, somewhere whatever you have mentioned here, right, it will be placed, right. So here, in on any project name, let me first go to the different uh, workspace. There is something called workspace. 
where if all your related uh, uh, stock will be placed. See here. This is, I mentioned somewhere, this is my workspace actually. Spring Hibernate is my workspace. Meaning, so all your projects, whatever you have defined, it goes and stores into this part. So now what I am saying is, I am going to create our own workspace so that it will be easy for you uh, to uh, let me. So I am going here, file it takes a lot of other features also will come to know all these things. So here I have a feature called switch workspace. Meaning workspace is nothing but you are you are prepared, you are developing your projects, all these things in your mission where all these are going to store. That particular folder is actually called workspace. So I can change, see now I am using for uh, Java code, uh, Java code, right? So maybe after two or three years I may, I may give the demo for the Spring framework. So for Spring framework also, uh, Spring framework I can define my own uh, uh, separate uh, uh, folder and for Java demo is a separate folder. So for that, I need to speak the different workspaces. Of course, if you want to prepare here also, you can prepare, but just I am giving the fundamental concept also for you. So here we have called switch workspace. I have different different workspaces like this, the Harop and Java training and even different different things also. But I am going for others for you say. So here, I can go Here, I'll select uh, create a different one. Java training. Okay. That's one. One second. This time we will take this one. Java driving. So if I click this one, so what it will do is it will it will close this one and opens the new session. So now it points to whatever the package, whatever the folder we have created, the Java training we have created, right? So if we type here something, it goes and stores into that folder. So this is the basic uh, stuff, it comes like this. So if we close this welcome, it shows empty. Right? So here you can define your projects and here this is the editor, you can do a lot of other things. So here, I am going to create separate project here. So for, for creating the separate project, I have feature called here, the new, and here go for Java project. It displays some dialog box. So here, just you can put the project name. I think you have seen, right, earlier I have shown with a AOP, Spring Basic, something like that. So like that you can uh, use some project name here. I'm giving some Java demo, and you need to follow the Java uh, some uh, coding standards also from starting itself. Just to, uh, just to be prepared for that one because nowadays though you have some uh, because of lack of experience uh, by seeing the whatever you are typing, so the other guy will uh, easily will come to know that whether you are experienced or uh, non-experienced. So Java contains some standard uh, features or some standard coding standard. So we need to follow those. So here the package name, you can write anything, but if you have the more than one words, so each word oscillator should start capital letter. And click the next. So here what it is saying, automatically it gives the details something like that. So here a search folder will be created. So means all your .java files, whatever you prepare, you prepare under this. And all 
dot class files. I told you, right? The output file stores the dot class files here. Under that, it creates the old bin folder. So all our intermediary code, that is, the dot Java will be compiled and will be placed into uh, converted into another file called dot class file. So that dot class file will be available in bin folder. I'm clicking finish. So here we have src folder okay in this src folder just i am going to create one sample program forget about uh, the from the um, uh, in depth concept just i am giving overview then we will go for in depth so we have created the java project and i am coming to class i am going to create one class file here that class file the source folder already by default it comes like this I am not going to refer any package, we will discuss that later. So here, class name I am giving demo. And here we have different modifiers, we will come to know what are all these things we will discuss. And here, for every Java class, whether it is user defined or built in, Java, Java API is defined in such a way that it should be one super class. So object is the super class for that one. This is actually called a package. Java.lang is actually called a package. We will discuss when we cover this package structure all these things. But here object is also one class that is actually called a built-in class. It will be considered as a super class for our demo class. What is that? All these things will come we will come to know. And here, just I am clicking this one. So automatically for this demo class automatically it gives the signature for this public static wired main screen. If you click this one. On clicking here. So now you see this is my class under default package. I haven't mentioned any package here. It is this one. And here it is displaying and it is doing this one. So just I'm typing here Hello, just to some board, forget about uh, the rest of the things, just I want to you guys know the uh, fundamental concept. So what is the system, what is the out, what is the pen we will discuss that data. And what is the public, what is the static, what is wide, why we have main, why we have strings of arguments, all these things also we will discuss that data. So just I am giving the fundamental concept. So now what is happening, what happened here? So when I type here, suppose if I won't take here this one, right? Whenever you get the red mark, this is error. So now what it is doing? It is contacting Java C every time. Whenever you type, uh, run, uh, contact the Java C, it executes the Java C and checks whether this is syntactically correct or not. So grammatically correct or not. So Java language, this should be ended with another double quote then only this is syntactically correct like that. So, now what happened is, this dot demo dot java file converted and prepared one, prepared another, another file called demo dot class. Where is the demo dot class file? See, when we prepare the java demo, it is created two folders for us. One is the SRC, another one is the bin folder. Now bin folder is not here. Right? Yeah. So come to this window. Demo.class will be in bin folder. Yeah, bin folder is not available here. Okay. Right? So that I am going to show you. So here come to window. Go to the show view. Here there is something called navigator. Click this one. Previously we were in package folder. Here we have these things. And if you come to the navigator, here we will see bin folder also. Forget about these things. This, this also I will cover once we uh, get some good amount of idea, good amount of knowledge in this one. So this contains the dot demo. But whereas here, this contains the dot class file. So now tell me, 
the dot class file contains what the final final version of final version which includes operating system features or maybe implemented code. It contains only the intermediate code that is actually called byte code. It contains only your code, Java code is converted into byte code. Okay. So when you run this one by using here, you can either you can go for here, done, or just right click, mouse right click, go to run as, here we have Java application. Now what it will do is it contacts, it takes the demo dot .java file. It never moves the dot .java file. Although already dot .java file is converted into intermediate level, that is the demo dot .class file. Now what it will do is when you run this publication, this dot .class file will be converted into executable code, and then that that uh, whatever you have written here, it brings. Any doubts the basic stuff of this one? No. No. You know all these things, but just I'm uh, refreshing. So, the thing is, whenever we are writing anything first in English, that, that's why this is actually called IDE, Integrated uh, Development Environment. That whatever the code is already written, here, here also we can write. But here we cannot combine that one, we cannot see the data file, the data. Uh, and the including on output and all these things, right? But in Eclipse, we can see all the because Eclipse contains all features. That's why Eclipse is called IDE, Integrated Development Environment. We have some others also. NetBeans, we have STS, we have, but are all built on uh, similar to Eclipse. Clear this one? Yes. And so this is just for running, or else just to put here, right click, put on this one, uh, right click, here you will get run as, this is another way of running the application, or else this one, it comes to the editor, here click, right click, Then you have something called run. Right click, uh, click this one. Here you will get this one. You click this one. It is also another way of running your application. Okay. So this is just a uh, running sample application. And suppose how to debug the code. Do you know what do you mean by debug? No. Being line by line. Yeah. So check what will happen? Right? So just I'm giving some just I'm writing something here. Uh, don't worry about this uh, uh, variables, what is I and all these things. Just I'm defining what variable here. I will come to uh, I will discuss when we discuss about the primitive type. But just how to debug I'm showing this one. For int i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to some n, i is plus plus. This is one way of writing some sample code here. Uh, uh, loop, looping the thing. So here I am going to use some variable. So here b equal to b plus the thing is actually I need some couple of those statements to just to show you how to debug. So that's why just I'm putting here and here I'm going to write. What is the double quotes and why we are putting this one, why we are using the plus operator here, all these things we will discuss. Uh, so here what I am doing is, 
just I am printing, the, uh, summing the numbers from 1 to 10. See here, C is equal to C plus I. I will be starting from 1 to, and I am incrementing that one. I am adding this value to C variable. And let me put one more variable, one more statement here. Something I am taking, some, okay. So now, I want to see how many times it will it will loop here, 10 times it will loop. Every 10 times it runs into this code, this part, right? So, every time, so what is the value of C I want to know? Because if you run this application, so what it will do is directly reduce your output to 55. And 10 times uh, that is uh, I value I am printing here. Okay, but I want to know every time what is the value of I, what is the value of C. It is you, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4 and some is this one, right? So if I want to debug this one, what we need to do? Directly this is actually run, this one if you go, it is actually running directly. It, it won't give any chance for you to uh, do some manual intervention. But now I would like to run, I would like to see what is happening line by line. That is actually called debugging. Okay. So to debug your application, there is something called this one. This is for running okay. and this is for debugging. And here also you can select debug as. Get my point? Yes. So before going to debug your application, you should tell to this uh, I mean, suppose J, uh, we have different uh, name called JVM, Java Workflow Vision. I will tell that later what is that one. So we need to tell to Java that where from you want to see the line by line. Whether you want to see from here, or from here, or from here, or where you want to see. So where the Java, where the Java want to, wants to stop somewhere so that there you can make the okay. That is actually called debug point. Okay. So, Click here. If you click double click here, I am getting some bubble, you see. Right? So that is actually debug point. So when you start debugging, so from here it runs as this way and then it comes and stops here for your intervention. I am clicking here. Debug. This one. So this is, and one more thing here, see this one. Here you are seeing the Java, right? I am highlighting. So meaning this is, if you see here, this is actually called uh, uh, running mode. So, but we are going to, and the screens also will be different. See here, this screen, this screen will not appear now. If you click the OK, different screens you will get. And here you will get something called debug. Right? And this is the area what happening internally. This is the area where you have mentioned your debug point. So it, it is stopped. It is stopped here because we mentioned your debug point here. And this is the area where you can see the values arguments, see, the count variable. The count variable here we declared, that value is assigned to 0. It is showing count equal to 0. And we have another variable called c equal to 0. But c equal to 0 is not yet executed because we mentioned the debug point here. So whatever the line is highlighted, that point is actually called current to debug, uh, current executing point, executing statement. Got it? This one? Yeah. How did you, I mean, like, uh, get the mark the debug point by double clicking on the left side? Yeah, double clicking on this this line. Okay, got you. Do you want to go back again? Yeah. Okay, we'll see. 
we'll after running we will see again we will we will put okay. the debug plans in different client and we will see. okay so this is the internal part of course uh, if you want to debug uh, from even thousand lines of code and what is going on internally and how many threads are creating uh, all these things you want to know this one will be work so here now it is a helping java w is your uh, interpreter area where it is executing and which one is executing what is the line breakpoint line at 12 if you uh, count from starting to here it is actually 12th line ok we will come with all these things so now this is the point it is stopped here see here alone was already printed so this is because from here to here already executed and here it is stopped because from here onwards it is expecting your intervention to go further so for that so either you need to go to here debug or maybe uh, three different way three, three different ways you can right click your java program and it will select the debug as or you can click this one select this one or right click your area uh, editor and right click and debug as select, you can select so whatever the way you selected so it shows the debug and editor like this this is the internal part this is all your variables and what is the status for each and every uh, every iterator uh, 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 every iteration and here this is your java code where the breakpoint is started and what will be happen next right so here if you see these are the two points and of course if you have some functions methods it, this also will be enabled but it is not here so if you click this one it gives the line by line if you click once the this this uh, uh, highlighted uh, one will be executed and it comes to down and now we can see once this statement is executed we can see this value here yeah I'm clicking this one it came down and this statement is executed and its current value is zero right and again I'm clicking this one it goes to next statement now the i value is one and the c value is zero so now the c equal to c plus one is going to explode the previous value is c is zero i value is one and zero plus one again i'm assigning to c yeah i'm clicking this one it is executed that one okay so now the c value is one i value is also one this statement executed now it is coming to this one click again it is executed this one as this is the loop again it went back to check the condition now what is the value of i i is equal to one right so it is true so that's why if you click again i less than or equal to 10 condition true it increments that value and comes down see now i value is 2 now what is the value of c c is 1 and i is 2 1 plus 2 c is already 1 i is equal to 2 1 plus 2 3 the 3 again we are storing into c variable see now the c value is 3 i is equal to now 2 again it is printing so it continues now c already 3 and i is also 3 b plus 3 6 c will contain this one like that it repeats if you click this one it will continue how long it will continue till condition fails so if you click now it is 10 right it increments that value it became 11 so condition failed so simply came out of this flow now it is executing this statement now what is the value of c now 55 that 55 it is printing it prints now so this is actually uh, how to debug your application so while debugging this is the mark any point of time 
if you, if you want to terminate your debug, you can click this one. Or any point of time, you can start your debug point. I'm terminating this one. Completed. And again, just click here Java. It comes to your Java code. How to test the code? That's what we have done now. Okay, testing and debugging is the same. I mean, like the just the terminology. I mean, like is no, different. No, 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 no. That is not just uh, for testing purpose. Of course, we have tested, but this is actually manual testing. Okay. We have tested what is going on. Uh, debugging uh, by uh, debugging, just we have uh, observed what is going on line by line. But testing is different. The testing actually we have the different approaches uh, for testing. We have uh, the J unit for testing. Okay. And we have some different. Uh, uh, we have the different teams also. They have different tools for testing. But J unit is only for uh, the uh, developer testing. Whether developer has written his code correctly or not. Okay. But functional testing, business testing. Integration testing. We have different different types of testing and different different test to, uh, scenarios also. So if we, if I give here, see one one type of testing here already we have done whether this is properly terminating or not when I reach a certain level, it is properly okay. terminating. That is one type of testing. So like that, we need to write separate program or maybe separate scenarios or separate observations when the program is running or possibly running or not. Can it be also called as a unit testing? Yeah, that's what I do. Unit testing is the basic testing that will help only some up to some area. It means whether the program is correctly working or not. So M, M unit testing is different from unit testing? Yes, M unit testing is different from unit testing. M unit testing, it contains the wheels of to, uh, means that is the, it integrates with the wheels of the API, like right? how we have the Java API here, right? It, in, it interacts with the wheels of the API and the wheels of the API provides the way to test the wheels of the application. J unit also helps, but actually J unit actually Apache developed API, which helps to uh, means that is the test whether the code is written correct or not. Suppose here I'm giving yes, here I can give the M value, maybe I can give a 10. If you give it, it should work for 10 times. If I give 5, it should work 5 times. Like that. The basic stuff only it is there. But business functionality and all these things say, for example, I want to transfer some amount from one account to another account. So what I need to do here, two different accounts are done. One is the uh, city bank, another one is the ICICI bank, just assume. So I need to connect from ICICI bank, I need to get to what is the value of there, and if it is, uh, uh, if the amount, amount to be transferred is available or not, whether account holder is existing or not, whether we connected to the particular uh, uh, ICIC bank uh, 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 bank environment. All these things are different different scenarios. So these things how we are going to test. So we have the different uh, uh, API or maybe some uh, frameworks like M unit and J unit and even uh, web applications related. Uh, we have some other things also. So those things helps to test only the uh, means that is your code interacts with all features. But it doesn't mean that whether the amount is transferred properly or not. Amount is transferred properly or not, that is the different uh, uh, thing. That is actually called functional testing. So unit testing is different and functional testing is different. And the integration testing. Integration testing means whether you are, uh, you, you may interact with the different uh, uh, systems with different regions also. So one system is uh, located in Singapore, another system is in UK, and uh, another system is in US and you are going to interact with those systems. And those systems will be stable. Whether these systems are ready to work together or not. That kind of stuff also we need to uh, test. So those things comes under integration testing. 
So integration integration means combining different uh, nodes together and uh, working with them. But if the testing is whether your code is properly working or not. Functional testing is whether business is work, business point of view it is working or not. Business point of view I want to transfer five dollars from one account to another. Account. So whether it is a transfer successfully or not, that is one thing. So we have different different uh, things, but whatever we have done, this is just to part of unit testing, not the total unit testing, just to part of unit testing. Or just to be, we are debugging whether our code is working properly or not, and how it is behaving during running the program. Okay, any doubts guys? Uh, just uh, these are basic fundamental stuff, of course we need to, uh, once we get to the basic stuff then only we will be, it will be easy for, for us to go further. Uh, there are other guys, Mohammed and uh, Sai. Mohammed and Sai. Yeah, maybe they are uh, So, is it okay? The center and uh, Rizwan? Yes, yeah. yes. You want to add some more things? See, see, so that's why the Java, uh, writing the Java code is very, very simple. Uh, everybody can write a code like this. Whatever we have written here, printing the numbers from 1 to 10. But uh, what internally happens, how it is, all these things also we should come to know. What is the system, what is this out, what is this println, why we are consuming this one, all these things we will uh, discuss later and what is the significance of private, public, static, wide, main and why we are passing the arguments here, all these things we will discuss okay. and why we are taking the public here. Yeah, I am removing this one. already this is we have mentioned in the single class right so that's why it is taking we will discuss all these things so what is the significance of without putting uh, access modifier uh, of putting access modifier what happens if you want if I won't take this modification all these things we will discuss in the next class okay that I'm showing here so why it is not showing here okay if we put here, uh, okay. we save it, now it shows here. Why? We will discuss all these things in the next, next class. So guys, if you have any doubts, so please uh, let, let me know. Uh, every day uh, before going to start the next session, we will discuss the previous uh, sessions, the, you know, the 5 minutes or 10 minutes the doubts kind of stuff and whatever it is we have on this thing, so it's here. Sure, thank you. And I recommend you guys just to get that JDK version, so just to Google it. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, struggle uh, anything, uh, let me know. Maybe my time, my time, uh, you would be uh, after 9 or 9 p.m. We'll work it offline. Uh, maybe uh, you one by one, one to one we'll uh, have then we will be ready for the next class. What, what version of Eclipse you are using? I am using 3x. Okay. Better to Eclipse. go for the 3 Okay, Eclipse Juno or Eclipse Mars, what, what exactly you are using? One minute. I am using... Either one, either one you can use. But one minute. I will. I am closing this one. Video. Yeah, it is showing right. No, okay. You can use either one, not uh, that uh, version, minor version, major version, city pack. You can use either one. Uh, center. So uh, uh, try to download the JDK 1.6 version and uh, uh, 
Eclipse three X. Okay. Any okay. trouble? Let let me know. Maybe my time uh, uh, nine p.m. onwards, or maybe yeah, whenever you want, you can ping. Guys, you also uh, feel free to ask any doubts. You can ping me in WhatsApp also. Uh, we'll discuss after and also. I can suggest if you face any uh, uh, or if you struggle anything, I will help offline also. But be ready with uh, uh, Eclipse and uh, this one. Before tomorrow's class, we'll be ready with all these things. We'll discuss further. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Ha, ha, ha.